In this video, I'm going to show you how you can tweak some settings in Cakewalk to alter the naming conventions. This might sound very boring, but if you don't know how to do this already, I think you'll see how it can save you a lot of potential pain and time in the future. So by default, Cakewalk handles all of its inputs and outputs as stereo pairs by default. So for example, if I click this drop down here and I go to Focusrite USB ASIO, which is a Focusrite Claret interface, we see all of this text that looks very similar, if not the same, in a lot of places. And this can be pretty confusing, especially if you're just getting into the way um, of recording or even cakewalk, because I don't think a lot of other DAWs sort of assign their inputs and outputs in this way, but I could be wrong about that. But what this means is, the first thing here, Focusrite USB ASIO input 1L. That corresponds to input 1 on my interface. Under that, we've got the same again, but with an R. That corresponds to input 2 on my interface. And inside Cakewalk, it corresponds to right. L is left, R is right. And that's because it's reading the interface in stereo pairs. Under this, the same again, but with S. And that is uh, channels 1 and 2 from the interface as stereo. But like I said, if you are recording a lot of things at once, maybe a drum kit or a live band, this can be a bit of a nightmare trying to root it right without making a mistake, because it's very easy to get lost. If you've got maybe 20 tracks and you're trying to assign 20 things that all look like this, the chances of making a mistake are pretty high. Thankfully, we can now rename inputs and outputs in Cakewalk. So if you go to the Preferences box, first thing to do is go to Devices under the Audio tab up here and make sure that Use Friendly Names to Represent Audio Drivers is checked. Now we can go in and rename the inputs to whatever we want. So the first thing here, Focusrite USB ASIO Input 1 that is corresponding to channels 1 and 2 on the Focusrite Claret. I've got some external preamps that are permanently patched in to the first four channels of my interface, so I'm going to rename these inputs to correspond to that. They are Phoenix Audio DRS preamps. So I'm going to double click here, I'm going to type in DRS1. I'm then going to hit the vertical bar symbol, which is that, and then I'm going to type DRS2. So this is showing me that channels 1 and 2 are channels 1 and 2 from the DRS preamp, which are patched into the Focusrite Claret. Under this, I'm going to do DRS3 vertical bar again and DRS4. The vertical bar is separating the left, right and stereo channel names. This might be a little bit confusing, but in a minute or so's time you'll see why this can be very, very helpful. And under this stereo input 5 and 6, or stereo input 5, this is where I return a compressor that I use on the mix bus, which is an external compressor. So I'm just going to rename this to suit. It's a drama 1968. So I'm happy with how that looks. I'm just going to apply this close. And now when I go to the input list, this is what I see. I've got DRS1, channel 1, DRS2, channel 2, DRS3, channel 3, DRS4, channel 4. 
even just having the numbers here make it a lot easier to set things up correctly. So if you're maybe, if you're someone that has a standard sort of eight channel interface, maybe like an Audion or another Focusrite or whatever, you could just set these up to say input one, vertical bar, input two, input three, vertical bar, input four, input five, vertical bar, input six. You get the idea. So if you had to do that, and you went to your input list, you would see input one, input two, input one and input two, input three, input four, so on so forth. And just taking the time to do this, it can really save you a lot of pain, especially if you've got, like I said earlier, you're recording maybe 10 to 12 channels at the same time, maybe even 16, 24. Without renaming your inputs, it can be very easy to just channel something the wrong way. Maybe record something twice or miss a channel, which I've done a lot of times. You can go one further if you like, you can rename your outputs. So the first stereo output pair, for me, is going to a pair of Genelex. So I'm just going to type in Genelec. And stereo output 3 is where I'm sending to my external mix bus chain. And the first thing it goes to is another Phoenix Audio um, Gyrator EQ. So, I'm just going to rename that. And I don't really need to put in the numbers here because they're both working in stereo. So I don't really, I don't really have to know what's one and what's two. So when I insert the external insert plugin, this is me sending out. I can just look for gyrator. And I always know the bottom one is stereo. Back in, drummer. So it's, it's a lot easier, but like I said, you can name this to do or say whatever you like. And it just really saves you a lot of, a lot of potential hassle.